Y'all. Oh, God. Hold on. We're probably trying to. Oh, oil. Full finish. I just came home from the gym. And I'm big and I'm tired. And one of these sweats. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back. It's Lex We Beefy, I'm back with another video. Um, as you can see, this is not an eating video. Um, you know, I'm kinda gonna shift this channel. Um, we don't have a lot of followers right now, but those that we have, I appreciate you. Um, I do understand if you wanna exit, um, because this is not originally why you subscribe to this channel at this time. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about why I look disgusting, <laughs> um, um, and a lot about my journey from 340 to 304. Um, a lot of folks that might watch this are part of my Lex We Beefy Walk group on Facebook. Um, that probably means that your personal family member, friend, whatever. Um, and I super appreciate you following that journey. But this um, video hopefully will be a little bit more in depth about my struggles, um, things that I'm currently dealing with, and. Um, kind of my projection in the near future, near future, let's say August 2021. I am a young black woman. I'm 26 years old. Um, I have been bigger all of my life. When I was in middle school, I weighed 230 pounds, standing at 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, um, I was one of the tallest or taller girls in our class um but that just that still did not suffice for the weight that i had on um leading into high school coming of age of 17 i um went from i want to say 240 230 to um down to 202 um standing at 5 8 slash 5 9 which i don't think is bad i think that looks lovely but on a bmi scale it says you're over right you're obese forget those standards um because i look good to good okay i mean i look good now but good okay um but <laughs> but so that's just to say like i've always been overweight i don't think there'll ever be a time where alexis is 178 to 185 pounds um like the bmi says also if i'm that skinny i look sick um i looked a little questionable at 202 let's be real um so i can only imagine what i would look like um at 178 to 185 but uh, i make that point just to say that you know i've always been overweight this is something i've always struggled with um and something i've always tried to come to terms with i think a lot of people talk about struggles um versus like acceptance um which i, th I think there's a line right um we we accept self-love we accept um who we are, how we are, what we are in our bodies, what our bodies look like versus accepting unhealthy behaviors, right? So I'm going to talk about that a little more later. Um, what I would like to do with this channel is I would love to turn it into a vlog channel slash journey slash lifestyle channel. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. I hope this is something that you're interested in um, and are willing to watch because I would love to go through this journey with someone else um with you all um why am i here so a lot of this uh struggles with weight started um i it's sorry i got distracted um scientific genetics genetics um i have taller family members my mother's tall my father's tall my brother's tall um a lot of them have been overweight um a large portion of their lives um our family history has struggled with heart conditions they've struggled with blood pressure diabetes all of those things which i will up front and openly say even at my heaviest at 340 y'all i've never had those issues um there was a time in my life where my blood pressure would go up i don't know if that was due to stress in grad school or if that was due to me being that big um but i've never been put on medication i've never had to be thank god hopefully i never will um and still to this day even after being pregnant with a child um even after having a child never had pregnancy complication well I, I did have a pregnancy complication but it was not due to my weight um 
that I didn't have birthing struggles um, and any of that. So I'm trying to keep my health the way it is. I don't want to be on medication for the rest of my life. It will not happen. I claim it. It will not happen. Um, so that's a part of my being overweight. Um, my desire for self-love. So I, let me back up. I um, struggle a lot with mental, I will call it discrepancies. <laughs> mental discrepancies. Um, I struggle a lot with depression. Um, anxiety. A lot of people would not be able to tell by interacting with me because I'm very other focused. I'm very let me make you happy, let me make you laugh type of gal. Um, and just a lot of people would not know that unless you're very close to me, then you absolutely know my struggles. You've seen me break down on the middle of a kitchen floor probably at some point. Um, but yeah, the desire for self love, and I think that goes into a lot of these negative. Um, intrusive thoughts that come in it and invade my brain space right even though I know I'm worthy even though I know I'm gorgeous even though um, I know I'm capable even though I know I'm smart even though I know I'm that okay <laughs> like even though I know all of these things and I have so much going these negative intrusive thoughts have so much power that we give them and they come in and invade our space and make us feel like all of those things don't exist, right? Um, or at least for me, um, that's how it has felt. Um, I think there's a lot I could say about self-love. I think that might be um, a whole nother conversation at some point between us. Um, terrible behaviors is something that I wanted to stop. So I would, and this is me being very vulnerable. This is me exposing myself a lot, but I feel like there's a need to do that because there's so many people struggling with this that you don't even realize. There's so many people that are engaging in these behaviors that don't even realize for themselves that they're doing these things. Right. Um, and so one of the terrible behaviors I wanted to stop was um, binge eating, something I struggle with every day. I'm not kidding y'all. Like every day I think about it every day. When I first started telling myself and trying to come to the conclusion that you are not going to engage in this behavior, this is not good for you, you are coping, this is not a healthy way to cope, do something different, immediate anger. Immediate anger just around like, why am I doing this? Why do I, why can't I, why can't I not, not eat five burgers in one sitting? Why can't I not um, gobble down a whole bag of chips um, to make me feel happy, right? Why am I not finding happiness outside of food, right? Why am I not finding um, hope and peace and joy outside of stuffing myself till I want to go to sleep and sometimes not even wanting to wake up. Um, that may be a little real for some of you, but that's how far it had gone for me um, and sometimes still does. Um, and so, yes, doing binging behaviors was awful. Um, it did not make me, in the moment, it felt great. Afterwards, you don't. You feel guilty. You starve yourself. And then after starving yourself, you binge again. It's a repetitive behavior. Y'all can find this all over the internet. Um, but that's how it showed up for me. It got so bad at some point, at some points where I would hide fast food wrappers or I would find I would hide um, the Big Mac boxes in a closet or I would hide a Debbie cake in um, a clothing drawer or whatever it is. And some people don't understand when you say those things. They're like, oh, ha ha. Yeah, you eat a lot. No. No, I disrespect the, <laughs> the F out of my body. Like, I don't think you understand. Um. And then, right, and I'm feeling this shame because I feel the need to hide this from people around me, right? Like, I feel the need, if I hide it, then it doesn't happen, right? If I, if I hide it, it doesn't exist, and that is so wrong, okay? Um, and I think um, my breaking point hit was when my spouse found Debbie Cakes in my clothing uh, drawer. And that's what it took for me to be like, wow. I'm really hiding and, and that right and that's terrible because you don't hide parts of yourself from your spouse but I did it out of shame and fear that 
this is not attractive, right? And I knew that, right? This is not like a behavior that's healthy or attractive to anyone. Um, but he was very supportive in that. He was very helpful in having that conversation. I did not feel attacked. Um, so that was super helpful. So if you are somebody and you have a spouse who is struggling with something like this, please don't attack them. They've already attacked themselves enough. They've already beaten themselves down. They don't need to hear that from you. Okay. Okay. Just making sure you know. Um, so yes, that was a piece of it. Um, but also understanding that like, is this something that I want to do for myself? Right. Um, like I said earlier, I just had a baby. My baby's about, she's about to be a year and a half. Um, I want to be there for her. I'm 26. I want to be there for her. I want to be able to run around with her. I want to be able to go skydiving with her if I need to. I want my heart to be healthy enough to last when she needs me, however she needs me, right? Um, and so that's also a part of it. Um, and the very last piece is just like, loving myself in the skin that I'm in um I currently am at 304 pounds um so 340 pounds right before I got married that was June July of 18 down to 285 pounds after our actually like day of labor and delivery with my baby I was 285 pounds but that's normal for women that are plus size and overweight we normally lose weight when we get pregnant with children I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's calorie burning. I don't know if we're incubators and our bodies just like burn all the metabolic. I don't know. Um, but that that's what happened for me. I will say that for me. But when I asked the doctor about it, she was like normally a lot of uh, overweight women lose weight when they're pregnant with babies. So when I had Camille, I was 285. Didn't do anything. I walked every day. I walked the dog, but it wasn't anything intense. Um, because again, like I said before, I had complications in my pregnancy, but it was not due to my weight. Um, and then jumped back up to 330 January of 2020 August 2020 I was 320 and now it is November no LOL where are we November 2020 and I am 304 pounds and I have lost um 16 pounds since the beginning of October or beginning of September when I started this um and I'll talk about that in another video of how I'm what I'm doing how what my approach is Lots of discipline, y'all. Lots of self-control. Lots of therapy. <laughs> it's a lot of that. Um, but we'll get into that into another video. Um, but those are some of the reasons why I'm wanting to lose the weight right now. And I'm also working on my mental health in the process because I know my depression and anxiety and PTSD, which I will tell you about that in another video if you're interested, because um, I'm able to talk about those things now, um, are all triggers right and and have created this fluffy protective covering right is what i call it um <laughs> but um some those are some of the reasons why i'm wanting to do this um starting with my eating correcting my eating habits and starting with um working out more how did i feel a lot of people want to ask me like well, how did you start how did you do how are you doing this every day I cried a lot. I screamed a lot. I cursed a lot. Like, this is not, this ain't, mm -mm, this ain't what you want. This ain't for the meek. Um, like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, first day, I'm going to start to do this. I'm going to eat healthy. Two days later, I'm like, God, I want a burger. I want a burger and some fries and I want a binge and I want some chicken nuggets. And I'm going to be mad about it if I don't get it. And I'm going to act like I'm mad towards you, but I'm not. And so it's it's sporadic. <laughs> it's not it's not easy. That's what I'm trying to get at. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's not easy to start a journey like this. It's not easy to break bad habits and look yourself in the mirror and tell you you're wrong. You're wrong. Like sis. And it's okay to be wrong. But get, but what are we going to do to correct your behavior? What are we going to do to correct the behavior and love yourself in the process? Hmm. You have to ask yourself that hard question. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy. You're going to get upset. You're going to crave sugar. You're going to um, drive through the McDonald's parking lot and drive home. I even did that. It was such a it was such habitual for me to go to fast food restaurants. I would drive it, when this started. I would drive to Chick-fil-A. I would sit in the parking lot, smell the food, 
and drive home. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. That's what it was. Um, and so it's, it's, I just, I say all this because I'm just like, it's, it runs deeper than what people think. It's deeper than a chicken nugget. Okay. Um, it's comfort. And how are you finding comfort in other places? Okay. Um, but yes, I was angry. I cursed a lot. I was upset. I cried a lot. I, um, wanted to give up very often. Um, and this is not to say I quit cold turkey, y'all. Like on the weekends or every other day, I would still eat some chicken nuggets. But guess what? I would buy them from Walmart. I would buy food and cook it myself instead of going to a fast food restaurant. So that's something that really helped me transition to cleaner, not very clean, cleaner eating. Um, because hello, hi. I still I still love chicken nuggets. Um, and so that's that's a whole part of it and don't feel like I, I just think it's unrealistic and unsustainable for us to hold ourselves to these standards of quit cold turkey you can do this no have you ever seen somebody on withdrawal like going through withdrawal before that's what it's like that's what it's like if you ever seen somebody go through withdrawal on drugs that's what it's like like i'm sorry i'm, I'm not trying to compare things but if I had something to compare it to that would be it um and then how am I feeling right now y'all how I look oh yeah oh I'm tired my knees Ooh. y'all how I look how I look like I feel y'all hear my knee popping how I look like I feel my bitch is tired okay <laughs> I'm tired um, I'm tired but guess what it's a good tired it's a good tired I don't feel I feel like even, I just spent an hour in the gym. I just did incline and jogging for three miles. I just did dumbbell swings. I just did um, leg ups. I, just, <laughs> I did planking. I did modified push-ups. And guess what? I feel like I could go walk two more miles. Like, it's a difference. It's a, it's a significant difference when you can tell that your body is changing, that you could tell your body is, your energy is changing, right? Um, my sex drive has increased heavily. Um, if anybody's interested in talking about weight and marriage and spouse and acceptance, all of this stuff, ooh, we could do a whole nother video. We could do a whole nother video. That's a whole nother realm <laughs> in itself. Um, but yes, those have increased. My, I don't crave terrible things um, that often anymore. I still crave sugar. Um, I don't know if that's just my sweet. There's no such thing as a sweet tooth. We just, you know, our brain wants what we feed it, right? Um, but I still crave sugary things, but guess what? I'm going to eat a salad, and then I might eat a cookie, or I'm going to eat a salad, and then I'm going to eat a piece of chocolate, right? Um, and so how are we picking and choosing um, what fuel to give ourselves or what food to give ourselves? Um, my neck is getting longer. It's weird. I think all my weight loss is coming in here and in my legs first. This midsection is so hard to, to go somewhere. Like you need to go, on. go. On. And if I got time, um, it's so hard. Um, my arms look stronger. They're, they feel so sore right now. <laughs> um, but they look a little smaller. They look stronger. Um, my skin, get up close. My skin is clearing up so much. I haven't even wiped the sweat off my face from the gym, but my skin is clearing up so much, y'all. Um, because when I was eating terrible, I would have breakouts all over my face. Um, you can still see some dark spots from previous breakouts that I've had before, but I'm doing, I'm doing much better. I'm doing much better. It's uh, still a struggle with negative thoughts. It's still a struggle of continuing to tell yourself every morning that you deserve this. You deserve happiness. You deserve um, feelings of worthiness. You deserve um, the body that you're working for. And it's there. It's coming. Look at you. Look at you. You're doing the things. You're hitting these milestones, right? Um, and it's just, it's an everyday thing to combat those negative, intrusive thoughts. It's an everyday thing to combat addiction and urges and coping mechanisms that are unhealthy it's an everyday struggle it's an everyday struggle um 
or everyday acceptance, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and so, but those are things I wanted to share with y'all. Um, I know this is so random. I know these were all over the place, but if you're interested in talking further, if you're interested in this becoming a vlogging channel, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, I don't know that my life is that interesting, but y'all y'all will absolutely tell me in the comments because y'all ain't shy um, about that at all, which is fine. <laughs> but um, I'm about to go get a shower and maybe do a face mask and go visit my um, family. So thank y'all so much for watching. If you want to join me in this lifestyle change, in this journey to self-love, this journey to... Um, or this ongoing learning of self-love is what I will say. This ongoing lifestyle shift. This ongoing care for mental, physical, financial, emotional health. Let me know. Thank y'all so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell your coworkers, your friends, your family, your boss. I love y'all. And goodbye.